Hi, my name is Constance Denchi, and I was asked to uh, do a little film about my current exhibit called Sinners or Saints. And this is the entrance way in. I'm going to do a quick walkabout. Um, this way, if viewers want to know more, they can look at albums on my Facebook like page which is www.facebook backslash small e y e large c o n small s t a n c e or i constant unseen so this installation as you come in is called Children of Anthracite Legacies, or Coal, a series I began in roughly 2007-2008 when I first arrived to northeastern Pennsylvania. So if you walked in, this is what you would see. I hope you <laughs> look at the paintings first. That's me in my jeans. And these represent works from when I arrived to current, over here, I have a quick little map of all the installations. We're in coal mine. Again, that's on the like page. I also embellished or framed the paintings with crocheted afghans because in 2008, Third was all about crochet bombing, except it wasn't being called that at the time. This is a piece about the glass ceiling, enhanced and anchored by a wonderful little target rug created by artist Diana Persibali. Here's the I Constance piece from one of the actions. As we come round, you see a glimpse into dinner talk. So here's the... Everyone, please bear with me because I've never filmed an exhibit before. Um, as a viewer, I think I would come in and go to the right. So I'll just walk around as if I was walking around. Sorry. This is the chair of hope. Hope is finding love in the broken pieces. Again, if you want more details or information, you can go to the albums on the like page. I'm just trying to give viewers a rough view. Well, maybe not too rough. But <laughs> in other words, I'm not so smooth at doing this. Um, so this is dinner talk, and I created everything on the table from various installations. Uh, this was back in 2007 to 2014, the chairs in 2016. This is the Chair of Love, the scene of the Kirkland Arts Center. So I believe at this mystical, magical table where there's dinner talk, there are these three chairs, love, hope, and possibility. And I turn, told my friend Diana Persibali that I wanted to have the fourth chair, more ominous chair, the chair of fear. And she came up with this wonderful design which more or less says, I hope, to viewers, that we weave our own destiny when looking at a window of opportunity. That sometimes this table and chair aren't so close together. The table of fear has been distance. I mean, the chair of fear has been distance from the table. And I... I really am 
not sure how much detail I should give you or not give you. Um, here is a non-commercial Christmas tree I made because often we sit with our families for dinner talk during the holidays. And in northeastern Pennsylvania, we are minors for peace, and it's through our faith and heritage. This piece was first seen at the trolley station in 2012. Here's a painting that was at the Connell Lofts, also in March of 2012. And down here, removed from the chair, I mean removed from the table, is a chair with a current painting from 2016, a fash painting. People ask me what fash means. It can mean fine art show here, which is usually how I Constance uses it, and or I use it myself for a father above save humanity. But that's more personal. Here is a chair about uh, sacrifice. So in Lithuanian culture, or my amber roots, or golden, uh, golden roots, or uh, the gold of the north, had so many names. In the amber heritage, uh, a child, no matter how old, is always still mom's baby at home. So this has to do with the sacrifice of those we love for God and country. And this whole little installation is just sitting outside this more ominous wall. And there's like things that you would find on refrigerators. This was the photo in 2007 that started the whole concept of um, sacrificing myself, the I. Constance I space, Constance, Constance has no head, Constance has no image, Constance is just a body, arms outstretched for a hug. In a stance to stop here. <laughs> here is I Constance on my t-shirt. For Halloween, it says, this is my costume. And right here, Hunter is one of the artists featured here. He has two works tonight. He is from Kurdistan. And the piece inside is about um, what is happening in his region of the world. So I have the suitcase or uh, that was first seen in exhibit at 3rd in 2008 which is a bag, mixed bag of stuff that we carry in life. This was in 2016, home base, first seen at um, the Kirkland Arts Center. It has to do with the ravages of war. And here's the Department of Veterans and Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center. So uh, I am a military brat. I am a DAR. I have a long history with that at dinner talks. And coincidentally, the artist Diana Percivelli is a veteran from the Gulf War. So her and I uh, had this kind of similar perspective when creating this. Um, and she totally got what I was saying. As a woman in here, um, I overheard in Wegmans someone really say this. Hey, honey, we're out of toilet paper. Also, did you see the news? ISIS burned 19 girls alive in cages. I saw it on Facebook. Uh, I actually looked that up after, and then I did see it on Facebook, and I was so horrified. I... I have spent months um, 
trying to work this out in my art and those love, hope, and possibility things that I do. But what I came up with, I, I were killed for worshiping peacocks. So I made a Hamsa uh, look like a peacock with protective eyes to hopefully protect these women since this is what I was uh, praying and thinking about. And I used 19... peacock feathers to represent the women. This does light and it has a wind component, but I have it turned off. This was made by Hunter about the same subject. He did it on paper that was very fragile. And I wasn't sure how to display it to fully get the impact of the fragility and respectfulness that um, he and I both want to give these women, yet at the same time make people aware of what is happening. And um, so as an optimistic thing, I put mirrors that hopefully their souls and their, their, their lives will transcend and give us hope as long as we keep them alive if we forget to talk about them then they would be lost and would have died for nothing so we have to be vigilant this was a piece that i came up with my son he took this photo and he added the fire and uh, this piece is called this this mirror is not broken because I'm clear of what I'm looking at. This isn't, when I'm looking at these global events, I'm not, I'm not the broken mirror. I'm looking at a broken mirror, but clearly I'm not broken. So I have to use that fire energy within me as an artist to make a statement about these atrocities and, uh, it ignited me and I can honestly say that it ignited the whole exhibit which has the title sinners or saints because they were burned for being sinners and this made me think of how in so many cultures women suffer and are burned not just in reality with actual fire but with language with images so we'll see more of this as um, the exhibit continues. So to me, this is a key piece. Uh, my son, he worked on um, he worked on these photographs, and instead of framing them, we chose to make this collage on the floor. So it can either read as fire or it can read as blood. So. Um, on so many levels, on an international level, it's talking about these 19 women over in Syria, but then on a domestic level, it talks about domestic violence and what happens to women in our own country, in our own state, and in our own towns. So here, as we leave, I have this chaotic one. juxtapositioned on the other side to this more peaceful kiss me quickly to show that within us there's always this dichotomy or battle between the two so as we come out of ignited we come into the more peaceful dinner talk again which distances and removes um, some of the more ominous feelings that we feel in the last exhibit. This is uh, justice. And one, two, three, liberty. <laughs> and there's statues, uh, the light. Statues of liberties on podiums. And they represent the different things because 
I live in a community called Jessup, and St. Ubaldo is the saint of the rich, and St. Giorgio is the saint of the middle class, and San Antonio is the saint of the poor. So liberty comes in different scales for different classes, and we'll notice as viewers that liberty has turned her back on the cross, but also the existence of, and I left the dust, this was intentional. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, there's my handprints in, on there, but um, the golden cross, my family name in Lithuanian means keeper of the golden cross. So it kind of represents my family and myself and the hill of crosses in Lithuania. So here's one, two, three cupboards, bare gut cupboards. Again, love, hope, and possibility. And this is Amber and Cole. I'm sorry, I'm very bad at filming. This was first seen at third. <sighs> and yes, I paint landscapes for so many years, 30 something years, I've heard Constance and uh, do you paint landscapes? Do you paint any normal stuff? Yes, I put this in to prove I paint landscapes. And then here's one of my crazy Constance paintings. This had to do with a roomy poem And then here is a community collaborative floor mural that um, was part of a project I did at the Kirkland Arts Center and Carrie Fuller Comfort directed this project. There's no one who sits in the director's chair of the third eye because um, third actually represents the third gospel, St. Luke, the patron saint of the arts. So I like to believe that uh, he guides us and helps us avoid the temptation of the usual things that sell art. See this apple's unbitten. So you really won't find sex, drugs, and rock and roll at an I Constance exhibit. Uh, this is Hunter's painting, and actually I have his painting facing liberty in a Christian America and the windows of opportunity for one, two, three types of financial freedom. This is Timeless Love first seen at the Kirkland Art Center. And in here is a very small and quieter room and it's called B. And this actually highlights three community projects I've done over the years, um, mainly working with children. So when you come into B, oh, someone moved this, it actually goes out with the last exhibit for just us. The cons I don't need a dogma because the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence give me every single right I need to be a free artist. The third eye is the unseen God who makes it all possible. And someone truly devoted to him was the little flower. So in B, this room is dedicated to her and all the roses in heaven who've come into my life. This was from an exhibit called Right On that was first seen at Exhale. And children at the Valley Community Library made each and every one of those flowers. I hint to the French flag here because the little flower was French. And how I came to go to the Valley Community Library 
was my oldest son. And here's a sculpture. He's now 25. Here's a sculpture I did of him, my Benjamin. So he's also B, so it's a play on B. So my philosophy is I'm more organic in my teaching approach. And I like children to be free to draw. So children can come and interact with this piece and draw on the wall. And somebody at the reception did. At first, it takes a while for people to feel free to draw. This one, um, this is Pieces for Peace. You can see more about this on my like page. It's kind of a complicated project. I sacrificed a painting I did about 2001 in the fall of the towers and attack on the Pentagon and then, you know, the plane falling in Pennsylvania. Let's roll. So I had a con concept, or this is a conceptual piece, to clearly wrap each layer after people reclaim pieces of their personal piece. And when I work with the children, the children at the Valley Community Library put over 100 different words for peace in different languages from all over. So we can see that in some places. Love always wins. Make hell rose. Uh, make the world a happier place. So they always have like these wonderful, wonderful messages for us. And uh, this has been, it has several layers of wrap. There's a YouTube about it too. And in the center is a child of anthracite legacies. You might remember this face from earlier. I put the peacock feather to remind us of what we try to screen from our children, horrors of the world, but to pray for those who've died and to ignite hope in our children with hope, love, and possibility that they have the ability to change the world and bring peace. So here is a community project I did with parents loving children through autism. And I used the, in this one, I used images from the children. And actually here I let the children and I let adults draw on here, adding different symbols for love is the heart, hope is the peace sign, and possibility is stars, that we can all reach for the stars, the sky is the limit. And so, the, these were St. Teresa inspired, and she had a strong devotion to Our Lady, the infant Christ of Prague, and the Holy Face, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So here is a sculpture that my son made the sword, and I made the dove, and I have to adjust his wings. Um, St. George has slayed the dragon for our children, because the pen is mightier than the sword, and we all need to read and write on. So that was kind of the goal for the children, because each one is a gift for love. And every child, as my former boss, Catherine Cullen, said, every child is at risk. So we have to give them the keys in life. And those keys are to trust, dream, believe, achieve, and respect. So as we leave there, the I Constance completely sacrifices herself in a destroy it freely <laughs> in the burning ring of fire and I came out of that personal hell to a clear world that was discovered at vintage in 2010 Michelle Beck being one of the artists my co-pilot on the project was Janelle Phillips who made the hands of this 
and what we try to teach your children. I love you. Read and learn about the world. And there's the Sakura for possibility, the pearls to remind us that beauty comes from great irritation. And that as we travel and journey in this world and grow, that we're part of something bigger. And as the children told me at this Valley community, I don't know if you can see the wire thing. This one was made by Megan. As the children told me, connect the dots. I don't know if you can read it on there. Trust, believe, patience. This was made at the Valley Community Library. Again, it's one of those layered ceram wrap pieces where we collectively wrote stuff on there, painted stuff on there, thinking that collectively our thoughts and feelings could build something greater. And we moved on to build Sarantin in 2010. which led to another exhibit at Exhale about love, marriage, and money. This is a newer exhibit, or newer style, I should say, 2016. This first, this style of my first debut at Studio PK101 in uh, upstate New York. Oh, I forgot to show here. Okay, this is important. These two figures, who are they looking at? Well, they're looking at Our Lady holding the infant Christ, and there's a little soul descending behind her. This was first shown at a Christmas festival exhibit in Eau Claire, Wisconsin which was part of the installation I did there, which we created a float. And one of the children gave me this amazing idea to use the hangers and the glitter and the... So that carried over into like these bigger pieces. Now, as we move to the shadier side of the room, here is which is technically the seventh installation but we can't get in there because this is a game I like to play with my viewers I spy with my little eye somewhere where you don't belong because sometimes in the art world some artists like to go places where children shouldn't go and I try to avoid those things I like I do like to play with my culture and uh, the images. So here's an ominous hunter, and then here are paintings from 2010, and in here in the special room, here is a painting more for adult viewers which I'm sorry, the light isn't going on. There's supposed to be light on this amazing painting. You can see it on the like page. Again, the apple isn't bitten. It's still not forbidden. The woman in his painting is naked for a purpose. He's trying to make a comment about um, the Holocaust and the atrocities that happened to women globally. Okay, so here is, oh dear, here is Michelle Back from Sabranton, the protective God's eye. Hey, back here, oh dear, what's back here? There's like little beauty things. And then I guess I'll end everything right here on a 
I Constance terrible because for my critics <laughs> who've been telling me <laughs> I'm terrible and I need to clean up my act <laughs>